Hello, I'm Paul Lefevre, the Real Software Developer Evangelist. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a container control to create your own custom control that will alter the dialog button positions depending on the platform. So what do I mean by that? Well, take a look here at the Real Studio Preferences. You'll see at the bottom that there's an OK and Cancel button. And because this is a dialog, it needs these buttons to close it. Because I'm using OS X at the moment, uh, the OK button is here on the right and the Cancel button is on the left. That's standard for the OS X platform. But let me show you what it looks like on Windows. This here is the Preferences called Options on Windows and you'll see the buttons on the bottom are in different positions. OK is on the left and Cancel is on the right and that's the standard position of dialog buttons on both Windows and Linux. So I'm going to show you how to make a container control that will automatically swap these buttons for you depending on the platform. So I'm going to create a new Real Studio project, desktop project. And first, add a container control. I'm going to call this OK Cancel Control. And double click to open it. You'll see that the uh, container control looks pretty much like you're editing a window. All the uh, available controls are shown on the left, and you have an a empty uh, layout area where you can put the controls. So I'm going to drag two buttons over, two push buttons over. And line them up, and resize the container control using the alignment guides. So now there's two buttons here. I'm going to position, uh, label these as if they were uh, being used on Windows or Linux. So this will be the left button and its caption on Windows and Linux is OK and it's the default button. And this is the right button and its caption on Windows and Linux is Cancel and it's the cancel button. So now you can see there are two buttons right here on the container control. So I'm going to go ahead to the window and by selecting project controls from the drop-down it shows me the container control in the project and I can just drag this over to the window. So I'll put it right up here. Let's leave it in the middle. And I'm going to run the project so you can see what it looks like. You'll see there's no evidence that these are on a container. The actual container uh, display is invisible when you run your project. And the button is shown in the Windows format. OK is on the left, Cancel is on the right. So what I'm going to do now is add the code so that when it's running on OS X, these buttons essentially switch. So I'm going to go back to the container control and go to the open event. It's open event handler. And here I'm going to use conditional compilation to check if I'm running on Mac OS X. If the application is running on OS X, essentially I want to change the buttons. I want to relabel them and change what the defaults and the cancel property are. So on OS X, the left button caption is cancel instead of OK. and the cancel property is true. On OS X the right button caption is OK and the default property is true. And Just to make sure that that is set properly I'm also going to set the default property here to false because we did initially set it to true in the properties pane. And I'm going to set the cancel property here to false. So now when you run the project, you see the buttons are reversed. Cancel is now on the left and OK is on the right. That's great, but I'm not quite done. Because I want to be able to know when the user clicks the OK button, regardless of where it is positioned. Right now I've just changed the labels. So the event for clicking this button, the left button, will get called regardless of whether it happens to say OK or Cancel. 
So we can handle that with some new events. So I'm going to add two event, event definitions to the container. I'm going to call the first one OK Action. And this event is going to be called when the user clicks on the OK button, regardless of its position. The next event is going to be called Cancel Action. And this event is going to get called when the user clicks the Cancel button, regardless of its position. What I need to do next is check the actual action events for the two buttons. So here's the action event handler for the left button. Now remember, the left button on Windows says OK, but the left button on OS X says Cancel. So again, I can use conditional compilation. And if I'm running on OS X, the user actually pressed Cancel if they're clicking the left button. So that means I want to call the Cancel Action event. And I can just do that by typing its name here, or I could type raise event cancel action. Either one will work. I'll have put the else clause in. So if we're not running on OS X, that means we're running on Windows or Linux. In that case, the user clicked the OK button. So I can call the OK action event. I can do the same thing for the right button, but essentially switching that around. So again, if I'm running on OS X and the user clicked the right button, then that's the OK button. So I want to call the OK action event handler. If we're not running on OS X, we're running on Windows and Linux. The right button is cancel. So I'm going to call the Cancel Action Event Handler. So if I go back to the window, you won't see anything different visually, but I'm going to double click on the container control that's on the window, and you'll see all the event handlers that appear underneath it. And you'll notice there's two new ones. There's now one for Cancel Action, and there's now one for OK Action. And we can implement those by putting code in it, just as you would for any event handler. So depending on what's clicked, we're simply just going to display a message box. So now when I run the project, you'll see when I click the Cancel button, it says Cancel. And when I click the OK button, it says OK. And if I were to run this on Microsoft Windows, it would work exactly the same, except the button positions would be different. Now looking at the container control, you can see there's a whole bunch of event handlers that are showing up here. Now maybe you don't want to see them because they're confusing and not needed for this particular control. Well, you can hide them by simply putting empty comments in each of the event handlers for the container control that you don't want to be appearing on the, the Windows subclass. So, for example, I can just put a simple comment on all these event handlers that I don't care about take a little bit of clicking because there are so many. All right, that's all of them. Now if I go back to the window, I'm going to just switch back to the layout, double click, and you'll see what shows up here. Cancel action and OK action. A few other ones we can't override, but you have a much nicer list to work with. The user can only see, or only sees, really what is important to them. Going back to the OK cancel control, you can see how useful this is, because now your cross-platform applications 
whenever you create a dialog box, instead of adding the push button separately, you just drag an OK Cancel control to the, uh, to the dialog box you're creating. You can enhance this, of course, by adding uh, properties so that you can uh, change the captions on these buttons, um, which is probably the most useful thing. And, uh, and it just so happens that the examples that come with Real Studio uh, include an OK Cancel control that you can use in your projects that does have that feature. So be sure to check it out. I'm Paula Fever, the Real Software Developer Evangelist. Thanks for watching.